Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we are looking at what is the AZ900. So the Azure Fundamentals is the entry-level cloud certification for Microsoft Azure. The certification is generally referred to by its course code, which is the AZ900. The AZ900 is about knowing the Azure core services, the fundamentals of cloud computing, and having a bit of hands-on experience working with the Azure portal. And if you look in the top right corner, that is what the certification badge looks like once you earn it for the Azure fundamentals. And then just talking about certifications in general for Azure, um, if you wanna have a roadmap as to what you would do after this certification, um, Azure breaks up their certifications, their, their role-based certifications as fundamental, associate, expert, and specialty. So in the fundamentals, we have the AZ900. For the associate, we have the administrator, the developer, the AI engineer, the data scientist, the data engineer. If you notice for data engineer, you're gonna see there's two course codes under it, DP200, DP201, because some uh, some certifications require you to pass two different exams. So if you want to become a data engineer, you have to pass those two exams. That the expert level, or sorry, we still have the security in associate, but the expert level, we have the solution architect expert, where you have two exams you have to pass. Then there's the DevOps engineer expert. And then for specialties, we have Azure for SAP workloads and IoT developer. So these are all the Azure uh, certifications that are role-based. Um, Azure or Microsoft used to have everything that was very um, uh, service or technology specific, but things have changed to roles, which makes things a lot easier for people that are hiring because uh, people that are hiring will look and say, oh, you have the data engineer certification. You must know how to do data engineering. Uh, so that is really simplifying things. You can take any of these in any order that you like. Um, so if you want to go to the expert level right away, you absolutely can. Uh, but it's not generally recommended. It's you should start with fundamentals, associate, go to expert. But you know whatever you think is best for you, that's what you have to decide. So who is the AZ nine hundred four? Well, it's commonly obtained by sales and management to help inform VPs or CEOs reasons for their company to utilize Microsoft Azure. And among uh, developers, uh, it's to show they have familiar knowledge with cloud concepts. So anyone that's like if you've had a programming background but you just don't have cloud experience, it's just a great way to tack on. Uh, the cloud skill there. And the AZ900 focuses on billing security and business-centric concepts, which makes sense because if it's designed for sales and management, it's going to be uh, things that are going to help them convince uh, to adopt it, such as uh, like using the TCO calculator uh, and, and informing decisions like that, like knowing SLAs and things like that to drive business decisions. So what value does the AZ900 hold? Well, if you're a developer, it's not going to be that useful on your resume. Uh, people aren't going to be trying to hire you just because you have it. Uh, you're really going to have to move on to the associate or expert track. Uh, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't get this one. Um, if you are a developer and you already have cloud knowledge in another cloud provider, say you have AWS skills, you already have an associate level, and you just want to show that you can work cross cloud, grabbing this certification just shows that, oh yeah, okay, I poked around the um, Azure portal. So you'll have that transferable knowledge. So that would be a good case to get it as a developer. Um, or if you don't have any cloud certifications and you want to make Azure the, the cloud provider you want to use, then that makes sense to go get. Um, the, the main reason I tell people to always get a, a fundamental certification is because it helps them build confidence before you take a harder certification. Uh, and it also gets you familiar with the exam experience, whether you do it in person or online, because that can be extremely uh, stressful. Okay, so now you're convinced that you want to go get the AZ900. So you're going to be asking me, well, how much time do I have to put in to gain the certification? Well, if you're a developer, uh, say, um, you know, a junior to mid developer, and you've been working in the industry for a few years, but you don't have cloud experience, I'm going to say that you're going to have to spend about eight hours of study. If you're a bootcamp grad, so you don't really have any uh, real world industry experience, um, but you want to try to tack on cloud as early as possible to help your resume and, and stand uh, amongst the crowd, you're probably gonna be spending 15 hours of study. If you are in sales or management, so you just do not have a technical background, but you're trying to understand uh, why you should adopt um, Azure or cloud for your uh, business, you're looking at 20 hours of study. And the way I recommend it is you want to put one to three hours uh, a day for seven days. And I mean every single day. You don't want to spread this stuff out. Now, next question is, where do you take this exam? Uh, and the way it works with most cloud service providers is they are partnered with a um, a uh, a company that uh, is 
also partnered with a bunch of um, test centers around the world. And the one that Azure is uh, partnered with is called Pearson View. Uh, but the great thing about Pearson View is that you can either go in person to a test center, so you use their uh, Pearson, uh, Pearson View website and it would tell you test centers nearby, or you can take it from the convenience of your own home. So if you have a web camera um, and you have a, a very sparse room so that you don't have a bunch of uh, things in the background and they can trust that you're in a secure location, they'll let you take it from your home office. And that's what we call a proctored exam. And the reason we, we call that a proctored exam is because uh, a proctor is a supervisor or person who monitors students during an examination. So you have those uh, uh, both options available to you. If I had to choose one or the other, I would strongly recommend going in person because online uh, things can just go wrong and you don't wanna have that problem. Um, but you know, it just depends on you, okay? And the last thing is, what does it take to pass the exam? So there are three components here. The first is to watch the video lectures and memorize key information. The second thing is to do hands-on labs and follow along with your own Azure account. Uh, and I, we show you how to set up your own account in here, but when we get to the sections, definitely you should do it. Just don't watch it because that's gonna make a huge difference to help you pass. And the last is to do paid online practice exams that simulate the real exam. You can pass the exam without using paid practice exams at the foundation level, which is this certification. Uh, it's much harder at the associate and expert level, so you're gonna have to go get a paid solution. If you are gonna go get paid practice exams, please do me the favor and use ours because it supports us able to produce this content. Uh, so don't go and use one of those other paid providers that do not provide free content because for us, if we made enough money, we'd make everything free and that's the whole point. So there you go.